Okay, guys. Let's do another one. First, I want to ask you guys to help me get the word out while there's still time to do something. In the past, uh, my videos were moved minutes after I posted them. Um, so that's one of the main reasons I've stopped up until now. And uh, let's get through this. Now, also, eh, you know, that being said, I'm sure I'm going to tick people off one way or another because, well, I, uh, I think for myself, right? I, I'll take a little of this, a little of that, and uh, put it together and do what I think is best for me and my family. So, you know, I, it doesn't matter what the popular opinion is or, you know, on whatever side. I do what I think is best. And I try to use logic for that. So, um, I'm not a doctor, guys. I want to say that. I'm just a guy with basic reasoning skills. And, you know, some things are not making sense to me. First off, like I said before, why do we keep hearing about a mystery pneumonia? But at the same time, we're being told it's the result of known pathogens. Why are we being told uh, that it's, a, it's the same as a surge in sickness that normally happens around the world as lockdowns were lifted, right? Um, we saw that wherever lockdowns were lifted. Kids' uh, immune system was kind of set behind because they didn't get uh, sick as much because they weren't around each other. Lifted up, there was an the increase in sickness. But if we're going we're to believe that, then why is it spreading outside of China if it's just the normal response to lifting a lockdown? That wouldn't be the case because, I mean, the other kids would they have been around, and, you know, gotten sick, gotten all kinds of crap off of each other because they don't wash their hands. I mean, come on, those of you with kids, kids are always getting sick. You know that. But why would it be spreading if it was just the result of lockdowns? Right? Why is the WHO not getting more information after their you're supposed to answer within 24 hours, right? Why are they not pressing China on a day that they ask for? And why isn't China giving the information if it's a known pathogen, right? Or pathogens. A couple things don't make sense. And another thing, should we believe anything either of them tell us at this point? And is this pneumonia... Is this mystery pneumonia what's killing dogs that I keep hearing about? Right? I'm not a doctor, as I said, but uh, I want you to get on a little raft and uh, come with me on my stream of consciousness, huh? And I just want to take a little notes here because I don't want to forget. I want to get everything down. But we are being told that uh, this increase in pediatric hospitalization is normal. But judging by the images we see in China, it doesn't really look that normal to me, all right? I'm not a doctor, but that doesn't look normal to me. Uh, Denmark reports myoplasma pneumonia and uh, a myoplasma pneumonia epidemic right now. That doesn't sound normal to me. <clears throat> Is it possible this microplasma pneumonia uh, is actually spreading and caused by C19 flu and RSV, like we're told? Um, you know, that's one thing that that doesn't it it does and it doesn't make sense. That means to me, and again, I'm not a doctor, but maybe this bacteria is hitchhiking. Um, if it's the cause of other sicknesses, you're not going to, I'm saying maybe if you have the flu along with this bacteria, you cough and you sneeze. You know, if you have C19, you're going to cough and sneeze. RSV, you're going to cough and sneeze. In those droplets, is that how this bacteria is getting around? Is that why it's spreading like that? Right? Because it seems to be fe spreading faster than you would think a bacteria would spread. It's spreading quickly, more like a virus. So is it a virus? Is it hitchhiking with a virus? With different viruses and sneezes? I mean, I'm just, I'm just speculating here. I don't know. Uh, if any of you guys are in the medical field, I mean, you know, what do you think? 
It's just something I'm, I'm thinking. Maybe that's how that's going on. That's going down. Right? Uh, so it's hitchhiking maybe and cough sneezes and being left on surfaces. Because, again, you know how kids are. I don't know. If this is a... And is it a... Uh, this microplasm bacteria, is it an antibiotic resistant uh, form like I had speculated? It seems to be, apparently, and I didn't know this, but there is a antibiotic resistant down in China that, that they've dealt with for a bit. Now, that's kind of scary to know. Like, oh, shit. But, uh, okay. <clears throat> so, first off, now would be a good time to stock up on things while you can. And, again, this is not going to be, I, I don't think this is going to be like last time. I don't think there's going to be empty shelves. Um, like, insane empty shelves and all that stuff. I, I don't think so. I think they're going to try to push that for the election, honestly. Um, that's my thoughts. Oh, there's some, you know, conspiracy theorists like, oh, uh, a, uh, AJ, I mean, I don't really follow them, I listen to them, I, you know, I've, I've, I can't remember the last time I've actually heard anything from them or anything, but uh, something I did here way back is that there would be some new uh, COVID strain or something right before the election, and I'm like, hmm, you know, I don't really personally, you know, put much stock, but uh, hey, you never know. Anyway, <clears throat> um, now would be a good time to stock up on things that might disappear that you might want, right? So think back before, <laughs> right? Uh, what disappeared? And you're, if you have kids, your kids need to come first, all right? There's going to be people that, oh, don't fear monger. I'm not fear, of, uh, I'm not fear mongering, and I'm not afraid of this, this crap. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to handle this as it comes along, right? Cool, calm, and collective. By panicking, you're not going to do anybody any good. By putting horse blinds on, you're not going to do anybody any good. Right? I, I've got a daughter to take care of. So, whatever happens to her, it, it, that's on me. So, what could you do? Well, cleaning products. You know, bleach that disappeared last time. Lysol, hand sanitizer, uh, masks. And I'll get to that one here in a bit. Um, and, of course, yes. Toilet paper. People will freak out and probably buy it all off the shelves just remembering what happened last time and it'll disappear. I think they've kind of been trained that way already, right? You remember in those first COVID videos, I'm saying stock up. That was one of the things. I'm like, hey, get it while you can. There's going to be supply issues. This time, I think the supply issue would be by people panicking and buying stuff that they remember disappeared last time. And this channel, it ain't big enough to, to make a difference either way. Those of you who are watching, okay, hey, maybe he's got a point. Let me just get a little bit of stuff just in case. I mean, if not, inflation. Inflation is driving up the cost anyway. So whatever you buy now, you probably save a couple bucks buying it now and having more now instead of buying it later because, I mean, you know, inflation is it's getting pretty bad like I always said it would. Um, so what can be done about this? Let's start off by saying, you know, again, I have a daughter and I, her safety is priority. I try to analyze. I don't put horse bl blinds on. I don't ignore. I just take things as they come, try to analyze them as they come. Okay? So, um, first off, oh, the Rona, it, it really couldn't be stopped if you wore a mask uh, unless you wore the right one. Right? And because of the particle size. So N95, that would do you some good, but you can't be wearing those damn things all, all day. You can get, you know, I've heard of people getting bad pneumonia or bronchitis, uh, just constantly wearing a mask, all that buildup of fluid and you're going to lower your the oxygen in your blood. So you can't wear them nonstop. But I mean, you know, for your kids, if you think you should, you know, you see people coughing and shit and you absolutely need to go in a store and get whatever you need. And, you know, I'd probably just go to another store because I don't want to get her sick with anything that you know especially some antibiotic resistant bacteria but uh you know the right one uh, a virus is much smaller 
than a bacteria, right? So, a virus was smaller than the in in these surgical masks of this cloth, especially was smaller. The virus was smaller than the holes in the material. So, some people would say it's like trying to stop a uh, keep mosquitoes out with a fence. It's you know. A, a, not quite, but uh, that's the right idea. It wouldn't be that much of a, a you know, that big compared to the whole, but uh, maybe in a cloth mask. But that was the problem there. Um, so, you know, the right mask. Now, again, bacteria much larger than a virus. So this actually could help out. And uh, just until you figure out what's going on. In the beginning, we had no idea what's going on. So I'm like, okay, you know, now. Did we ever uh, take anything experimental without any safety data? No, we didn't. And uh, we, we caught it once, we're okay, and I don't regret that decision. You know, I, I just did my own research. Hey, let me figure out what's right for me. So let's go into that. So, <clears throat> uh, would this work? Uh, would, would this work on um, this Mitoplasma bacteria? No, because it's a bacteria, right? Antibiotics wouldn't work on the flu. Antibiotics wouldn't work on the Rona <clears throat> because they're viruses. Antibiotics fight bacteria. So those of you who know Dr. Zelenko uh, or the FLC, uh, FLCCC's work, well, that was, you know, boosting your immune system, that worked across the board, but the exact treatments, no, that was a virus, this is a bacteria, right? So things would be a little bit different. Is getting the flu shot gonna prevent this uh, microplasmic uh, pneumonia? No, that would prevent the flu. Now, if another kid got it, didn't get the flu, didn't sneeze on the kid, then maybe, but is it gonna prevent your kid from catching this uh, pneumonia? No. Uh, flu shot would prevent the flu. Will a C19 jab help prevent this? Well, honestly, we know it doesn't even prevent C19. So, no. Uh, that'd be like somebody taking Tamiflu because they got an antibiotic-resistant staph infection. It wouldn't do any good, right? That, that antibiotic-resistant uh, MRSA? <laughs> uh, you take something start, that's meant to stop the flu, it wouldn't do a damn thing right apples and oranges so uh, what could you do yeah I'm gonna tell you what I would do right you decide whether it's right for you or not you do your own research I ain't gonna tell nobody what to do I'm just telling you what I'm doing you get ideas off of that right like hey you know that makes sense let me look into it or nah he, he let him do that so uh, dr. John Camel did break down a study he saw uh, done in Beijing where 85% of the kids, I believe it was, that were hospitalized with this white lung syndrome were vitamin A deficient. So vitamin A is the big one this time. The more they lack vitamin A, the sicker they were. So you probably want to make sure you've got your vitamin A levels at least where they should be. Uh, now, not too much because that can be dangerous. So I wouldn't recommend going and getting a supplement and giving your kid... Uh, that a day no 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 do it the natural way because the best course of action is to get this from food such as eggs milk yogurt cheese or just simply eating carrots and your body will produce vitamin A I personally would keep vitamin A in the house if she got sick you know depending on how she was doing uh, maybe give her a little bit every uh, every couple of days and I increase the foods I just mentioned um, what kind of items would I use? I'll leave a study to the last study I did way back, but it was about uh, about chloro copper being used. In, it was in just a test they were doing to see what it would kill, and it killed all kinds of different pathogens, H5, uh, N1, SARS, and a couple of others. I mean, there was quite a bit that it did do. Uh, it fought against. We know that silver and copper have antimicrobial properties. So, in the study, they said that it had to be the right uh, concentration, it had to be the right particle size, and it had to have the right charge to be effective. 
and I believe me I did some research on that it took me days but eventually I found this one here and I'm going to leave a link in the description bar this had all three and I'll leave a study and then I'll leave a link to this guy you can check it out for yourself and because well bacteria it's a it's a bacterial growth uh, in the lower lungs well you get it down there somehow I got these nebulizers again I'll leave a link in the description bar uh, do the research look into it make up your own mind this is what I'm gonna do me so you make up your own mind right um, another thing I've bought a silver generator colloidal silver generator and the rods don't be cheap using those damn coins if you're gonna do this use the rods there's kits you can buy and I made <laughs> as you can tell I happen to uh, fancy uh, good alcohol right so wash up the bottle you get some distilled uh, distilled water and you'd make your colloidal silver and then I have a uh, Vix humidifier for younger kids when my daughter was kind of young a while back and I just every now and then you know once a week take a gallon of the distilled water take a good you know <laughs> about 750 mils of a uh, of colloidal throw it in there and just leave it on low you know and I, this time I'm not gonna do that on the uh, all the time I'm just you know let's say that my girl was to come down with that well then I would do that uh, again but I just want to have it on hand and uh, of course take her to the doctor I antibiotic resistant or not let them take a look confirm it before I did any of this if they give her antibiotics I don't know how helpful it'll be but I'm sure as hell gonna do what the doctor says hey look take her give her this every whatever hours with food yes you got it I'm gonna do what I can for my daughter um, so vitamin A this which I've used again for myself against the flu and it did wonders for me I know it's safe I've used it myself uh, so anyway that's what I plan to do you guys make up your own mind all right um, leave your comments below uh, that helps <laughs> like and share and uh, like I said I want to get this out and I'm not saying I know it all I just want you I, I'm, I, I'm making it up as I go just like hey this is what I see as the best course of action for me right now with the information I have you know this is seems safe uh, to do for me and my family it's I go on research that I find and whatever information I can you know I can find I try to keep up with things again there's some things I do some things I didn't do right I uh, me no I, I didn't I didn't take any jabs and I refuse to and the next thing they come up with they rush through I'm not doing that neither right I'll just stay with something I mean uh, I heard that the measles vaccine actually provided some uh, some protection but uh, there was no money in that or in something else so anyway you know never trust the guy with it's gonna try to take take this here and uh, by the way if anything happens you're you, we're not liable and we're not gonna tell you what's in it and there's no stuff now mm -mm. you guys make up your own minds man anyway that's it for me um, good to be back I miss doing these so I'll catch you guys in the next one leave your comments especially if you guys you know in the medical field what do you think um, I'm doing my own thinking I know the thought police will probably shut me down that's okay let's get I'm gonna get my ass on off of YouTube that's fine Anyway, while I can, maybe uh, maybe somebody I can get somebody to do a little bit of thinking out there. I'm out. Y'all have a good one. Let me work on this uh, Glenn Levitt here.